Dedication of Katie Did's Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kirby Wheatland. Katie Did's Poems by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Dedication. Dedicated to J. I. McKinney. To him whose every word is one of praise, who loves to linger where my thoughts have been, and who delights in all my rhyming ways, I offer first these efforts of my pen. Letter to Katie Did Dear Katie Did, I am more pleased with your lines than when I first read them. They are intensely womanly, natural, musical, and sweet. They are absolutely free from affectation. Only the restraint of rhyme and measure seem to deprive your muse of perfect freedom and grace. There is also a delicacy of thought and fancy, and of purity of sentiment that pervades the whole like the sweetest perfume. No one can listen to your chirpings, and feel like touching the bough from which you sing with a crude, critical hand. He would rather listen through the live-long night to the end of your song. I remember well your first attempt at rhyme while a girl here at school. Even then there was a pleasing promise of a beautiful and useful pen, and I am glad that you have found time and opportunity to improve your early gift. I am glad, too, that you have been persuaded to give some of your sweet little poems to the press. The tender, the true, and the pure of heart will read them with delight. Affectionately your friend, John August Williams. Daughters College, Harrodsburg, Kentucky. End of the letter to Katie did. To a Katie did by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org by Kirby Wheatland. Little friend among the treetops, chanting low your vesper hymns, never tiring, me inspiring, seated neath the swaying limbs. Do you know your plaintive calling when the summer dew is falling echoes sweeter through my brain than any soft harmonic strain? Others call you an intruder, say discordant notes you know, or that sadness more than gladness from your little heart doth flow, and that you wake from sleeping thoughts and quiet they were keeping, faithless love or ill-laid schemes, hopes unanchored, broken dreams. No such phantoms to my vision doth your lullaby impart, but sweet faces, no tear traces, smile as joyous in my heart. And when first at mother's knee learned I your sweet mystery, I defend you with my praises, for your song my soul upraises. Do you wonder that at twilight, always by my cottage door, I am seated, you've repeated, oftener still those tunes of yore? And I love them, love your scanning, and your noisy treetop planning. Though you struggle with a rhyme, in due season comes the chime. Oft I fancy when your neighbors in some secret thicket hid, are debating, underrating, what that little maiden did, that above their clamorous singing, I can hear your accents ringing, like a voice that must defend from abuse some time-loved friend. Though the nightingale and swallow through the poet's measures sing, no reflection of dejection petrifies or palls your wing. In the calm and holy moonlight, on and on with hours of midnight, in the darkness, in the rain, still you whisper your refrain. Dream I not of fame or fortune, only this I inward crave, sweet assurance, long endurance, of a love beyond the grave. Should my songs die out and perish, you'll my name repeat and cherish, though all trace is lost of me, still you'll call from tree to tree. Katie did. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Daydream by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. A Daydream 
I'm looking in a mirror, Belle, the mirror of our past, and many a bright reflection, Belle, into its depth is cast. Reflections that are calm and clear, and oh, to us so very dear. I see a village, old Kirksville, its long and narrow street, and as it climbs upon the hill, how many friends I meet. And Belle, your face smiles out to me, the sweetest face that I can see. There is my home hid among the trees, back of the village street. A welcome rushes on the breeze, and restless grow my feet. My heart leaps forward, and I view the dearest spot I ever knew. Home, home again, and children we skip through the pastures green. Your eyes of blue I plainly see, the sweetest ever seen. And on your cheek the rosy tinge, and curls of gold your temples fringe. And see the dogs we used to pet, down through the lawn they run. Not many passing by forget their bark or fail to shun old Carlo of the greyhound race and lion with his vicious face. Yet us they follow to the hedge where hours with them we've played and to the pond along whose edge barefooted we would wade. Decorum could not cramp the brain and love unlocked his golden chain. We climb upon my father's barn, hide in the straw and hay. We watch Aunt Sylvie spinning yarn in the old-fashioned way. She tells us tales by candlelight that fill our hearts with wild delight. A shadow falls, I lose your face. Lost is the fairy tale. And just before my eyes I trace a kind of airy veil. A network that is strangely planned, held by the present's cunning hand. The shadow now has passed away, I glance the meshes through, and find strange children there at play, beside your knee, one, two. The little faces both foretell a happy future for you, Belle. Long, long I gaze that pretty view, dissolves away in air and still i'm looking bell for you and still i'm standing there i strive your image to retrace all all has vanished but my face and closing round me as before i see a figured wall a carpet blue upon the floor and sunlight over all bewildered Yet entranced I seem, and waken from a sweet daydream. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Ravine by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org. Just back of my dear old home, it rolled with many a crumpled and rocky fold hedged round with cherry and locust trees their strong arms toyed with the breeze like knights arrayed for march or fight they stood with waving plumes of white and oh that valley's inmost room was a mass of ivy and violet bloom the larkspur shook from its purple crest a dewdrop down on the lily's breast the bluebell dozed on the rivulet's brink and the myrtle leaned o'er the edge to drink even now as i write through the open door i catch a sound of the cataract's roar and see the girls just out from school knee-deep in the ravine's limpid pool and the boys ah me how plain can i see them stealing the bark from the slippery tree the door slams back it is scarce apart with steady eye and fluttering heart i watch the girls of the valley turn in search of peppermint and fern and the boys are waving their caps to me as they stand in that ragged and torn old tree 
in some wild way i never knew how i climbed to the swing on that elm tree's bough was twittering a song as i used to do and counting the clouds in the sky's soft blue when the girls came out from the valley's shade and earth into heaven seemed then to fade twas the eden of old and i was a child i have thought of it since and often have smiled sitting there in the swing with the girls at my feet and the boys overhead my joy was complete what a mockery then to awaken and part with the happy illusion how hollow my heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain some day you wish for me by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org some day my darling when the rose has died that on your pathway throws its petals sweet when the sharp thorn is springing near your side and nettles pierce the mould beneath your feet you wish for me some day my darling when the crystal cup of beauty shattered lies and spilled its wine when pleasure's urn denies your lips one sup and you drink deep of disappointment's brine you wish for me some day the wreath will wilt upon your head you'll smell the bud and find a worm within some day my darling when your friends have fled and strangers mock your frequent tears ah then you'll wish for me some day my darling when death's dews fall cold upon your brow you'll gladly let me come when dreams present the shroud that must enfold your limbs and your sweet lips grow chill and dumb you'll wish for me you long for him whose hands were oft denied to pluck a rose lest they the bush pollute yet he would come and stand a slave aside to grasp the bramble and the thorn uproot if you but wished for him he'd kiss your limbs the hidden briar had torn and bathe the wounds with pity's saddest tear he'd close your eyes that near till death had worn for him one look of love and at your bier he'd kneel and pray for strength to watch you hidden from his sight for strength to turn aside and leave you there clasped in the arms of everlasting night and yet my darling not as great despair he'd feel than now end of poem this recording is in the public domain to halley by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org sad and cheerless stands the homestead in its grandeur as of old tis a casket lost the jewel tis a mine without its gold once a sunbeam at the doorway gilded room and gladdened hall making life a golden summer full of joy for each and all but the sunshine that has vanished ne'er can brighten o'er us more though i bow in meek submission yet my heart is sad and sore i have lost my life's sweet treasure earth holds nothing dear for me upward onward be my motto onward upward still to thee halley be my guarding angel teach my footsteps not to stray spread your sainted wings above me lead me in the narrow way so that you can come and meet me waft me heavenward on your breast where the wicked cease from troubling and the weary are at rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain i've asked you to forget me by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org i've asked you to forget me to let our happy past ne'er be recalled for ah it was too sweet too bright to last but yet you say that you're my friend and still as fond and true while i ne'er care to see thy face or have one thought of you then ne'er again recall those days when roguish cupid played at twining garlands round our hearts 
only to wilt and fade for i have with a steady hand not heeding love's sweet art unwound them from their resting place and freed your faithless heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain little blanche by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org gather up the broken playthings scattered on the nursery floor blanche is gone her little fingers near will fondle with them more hide away the dolls the dishes precious treasures oh so dear lay aside the little dresses in each fold a mother's tear god hath given god hath taken though it rends the heart in twain he but sends his frowns upon us to give back his smiles again she hath gone to wait your coming smiling where the angels stand lingering there at heaven's gateway that she first may clasp your hand end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Little Front Gate by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org Away from the world and its bustle, When the daylight grows pleasant and late, In our own cozy cot I am waiting For the slam of the little front gate. The birds at the doorway are singing, The roses their beauty debate, But I sit here alone and I listen For the slam of the little front gate sometimes ere the shadows of twilight send the roving bird home to its mate i list for a hurrying footstep and the slam of the little front gate oh you who are burdened with sorrow and believe that life is but fate learn from me there is joy in waiting for the slam of the little front gate end of poem this recording is in the public domain Drifting by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Kirby Wheatland Scotta, you are drifting from me O'er the billows of life's tide You and I have sailed together With our frail barks side by side You are drifting with the current But my feeble oar is light Too light to follow And in anguish I must watch you drift from sight, drifting, gliding, moving onward, tide and sky seem one deep blue, all in vain my eyes are yearning, you have drifted from my view. But there's yet a broader current, where our meeting barks will land, you and I still bound together, heart to heart, and hand to hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Looking Back by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org She opened a little warm package, scarred yellow by time's ruthless hand, disclosing a bundle of letters tied up with a pale ribbon band. These, she said, are like leaves from a fernery long pressed in a book with a flower and the memories wafted up from them like perfume that follows a shower with no wormwood or gall in the essence few tears in life's garden were sown the clouds partly hiding the sunshine some weeds with the blossoms have grown but we loved here she held out a pitcher a teardrop was dimming her eye as a cloud will o'ershadow the landscape or shut out a star in the sky. I took up a ring and a locket, set deep with a ruby and pearl. The clasp was all tarnished and broken, and tear-stained the face of the girl, whose eyes were awake in hope's morning. Love kindled their depths with his spark. Even then, from the red velvet lining, they glowed like a gem in the dark. I turned to the sad little figure, round the package the faded cord tied, 
pressed my lips to her cheek ah how sadly the roses had bloomed there and died long we sat in the lingering twilight looking back o'er the vanishing years she sobbed out her grief on my bosom and moistened my brow with her tears what comfort in words could i offer there was more in a soul-telling glance for each heart hath its season of springtime each heart hath a buried romance end of poem this recording is in the public domain Scotta by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Scotta. I saw her last night in a vision. How often she comes when I dream. Through the garden of heaven she loitered, then stood by a clear, placid stream. And out of the heart of the river, a bunch of white lilies she drew. I scarce could discern from the blossoms her fingers so waxen their hue. But her face wore the same quiet features, and her smile was enhancing the light that fell on this friend of my bosom, this angel robed softly in white. I longed to reach upward and touch her, to ask why the flowers she twined, wondered often for whom was the garland and the crown with the lily buds lined. So I cried, and my voice soared onward, farther than sight could extend. For whom are you weaving this chaplet? Speak, Scotta, sweet spirit and friend. Oh, tell me, just why from the portals of heaven you've wandered away, and sit here alone by the river? breathing these lilies today her lips parted as if for an answer then a cluster of cherubim came they hovered about this sweet seraph and whispered in concert a name it resounded along heaven's archway but soft on my ear that word fell soft as her accents of friendship soft as a sabbath eve bell and the dewdrops and spray of the river on the garlands to crystals had turned the crown she embedded with snowdrops when jewel there glittered and burned its lustre was brilliant and sunlike as burnished as those in the throne but the name that her own gentle fingers had carved there ah me was my own and what if life's thorns press my temples, Or sorrow to midnight turns day? I will press on alone through the darkness, Believing her hand leads the way. I will traverse the chill swamp of cypress, Where the rivers of death slowly wind, For she'll beckon me over with garlands, And the crown with a lily bud's line. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lover and Flower by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org. I found it one day in a pretty shade, which a vine and a maple together made. Twas blooming away in a dress of white with eyes of a blue transparent light i knelt at its shrine and this heart of mine drank in the fragrance as one drinks wine then i said sweet flower this cooling shade with the summer weather will dim and fade there's a place in my heart a cosy room where you may nestle and grow and bloom thus i wooed the flower in this shady bower and lovers we were that self-same hour I carried it home, I pruned it with care, I gave it the sun and the morning air. The honey-bees came, it's due to sip, but I drove them away with pouting lip. For I loved my flower, and with jealous power, I banished the bees from our curtained bower. 
a butterfly came on wings of lace and tried to fan my blossom's face but i brushed it away with cruel hands and tore from its wings the velvet bands then i kissed my flower but a summer shower burst from the clouds with mesmeric power then the pale little blossom heaved a sigh and opened a blue and timid eye to thank the cloud as it did in the shade which the vine and the maple together made but my heart would rebel i could not quell its raging fire it seemed from hell i slammed the shutters with curses of doom i made it dark as a dungeon room then i hurried away like a thief in the night but i strolled again in the warm sunlight and another flower from fashion's own bower i culled and nursed it only an hour it proved but a weed with a gaudy bloom and a poisonous odor filled my room so i turned once more to my wildwood flower that i locked in my heart that sinful hour when the angel of love to its mansion above had fluttered away like a wounded dove how softly i turned the key in my heart one moment i faltered the door swung apart a faint sweet essence like heliotrope bloom was sickening my senses i moved through the room with a staggering tread with a brain reeling head and swooned there a murderer my flower was dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain my cloud to scotta by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox.org by fraser prescott there's a cloud on my life's horizon of wonderful shape and hue like the feathery down of a snowdrift tis dimpled with changeful blue i gaze on its shadowy outline and drink in the calm of the skies till i fancy it floats out of heaven as an angel in disguise no slumbering storm in its bosom no hint of the lightning's glare only a feast for the heart and soul is this treasure of the air for i know from its silvery edges in glimpses of hidden gold that a picture of rare tranquillity its tender depths enfold else whence is this mystic feeling of peace that's stealing o'er me like the magic of summer moonlight enchanting a restless sea o oh, heavenly cloud why are you so calm so angelic you seem my spirit escapes in its longing i am lost in a beautiful dream up up on the wings of a swallow piercing the heavens deep blue o'er meadow and mount i am rising and floating sweet spirit to you onward in trance i am wafted now into the cloudlet above and a face smiles out from its drapery and ah tis a face that i love end of poem this recording is in the public domain the decision by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox.org. a dispute once rose in a beehive as to which of the little brown bees could gather the sweetest nectar from blossoms or budding trees the queen tried in vain to discover some method the riot to quell but a challenge for war had been sounded and threatened was each honey cell so she spoke in a voice most persuasive he shall sit on my throne for an hour who brings from the storehouse of nature the juice of the sweetest slipped flower away flew the brown little workers away out of sight o'er the hill then backward and forward they flitted the honey cups eager to fill one famished the heart of a lily and drank from its milky bud one opened the vein of a rose leaf and licked up the crimson blood to a poppy bed still one hurried on a downy cot he crept but all day in the silken blankets unconscious there he slept another flew off to the meadow and punctured the daisy's cap a swarm had encompassed a fountain where gurgled the sugar-tree sap a fourth and a fifth to a mansion 
had followed a bridal pair one strangled the bud on her bosom one mangled the wreath on her hair but the sixth one paused at a cottage where a sick girl sleeping lay and there by the open window blossomed a hyacinth spray a youth stood near in the shadows and watching the dreamer's face a tear rolled down from his eyelid and fell on the hyacinth vase it was only the work of a moment for a busy bee to do to flavor affection's teardrop with the extract flower dew so he gathered this precious honey and polishing up his sting he flitted out of the window with gold dust under his wing such a night in the little beehive before was never known for the hyacinth's rich moist pollen had paved the way to the throne end of poem this recording is in the public domain autumn by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox.org by kirby wheatland who is it that paints the woodlands like a gorgeous gown of gold dropping here and there a ripple of vermilion in each fold who is it that calls the robins and the blackbirds into bands pointing them with flaming fingers to the sunny southern lands what has scorched the tender blossoms in our yards they're dying now do you know who kissed the apple till it reddened on the bough why so mute the little streamlet down the hill it used to leap now i faintly hear it sobbing sobbing out like one in sleep leaden clouds lay on the heavens like a burden on the heart and the winds together whisper sad as loved ones ere they part then anon a dreamy dullness hovers over sky and earth ah my soul reflects the sadness and i seek my friendly hearth you who love the indian summer so renowned by pen and art go and revel in the gloaming while so sadly pants my heart but i cannot watch the leaflets on the whirlwind as they ride for just so a hectic river bore my darling from my side end of poem this recording is in the public domain a sister's love to ida by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org she knelt beside her brother's grave the day was near its close and where the cool tall grasses wave she lay a fresh-cut rose then from a silver waiter near she drew a wreath of white besprinkled with the twilight's tear or shadowed with the night and placed them on the green kept mound i watched her kneeling there her face bent on the sacred ground in attitude of prayer and while a bird sang soft his hymn down looking from above we saw unveiled a picture dim a statue true of love end of poem this recording is in the public domain In Memory of Fanny Johnson White by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org If I could blend into my verse that soft and slumbrous haze, so faintly resting on the rose before the autumn days have chilled its heart and numbed the leaves and drunk the precious dew, then could I melodize in song her life so pure and true or could i weave into this song her smile so rich and rare that found its way to every heart and left its halo there then earth would not seem desolate or days be lone or long since she would sweetly live again in verse and smile in song all this is vain both pen and voice too weak to speak her worth though memory writes in words of gold her beauteous deeds on earth heaven claimed our flower there we may bloom if we the watchword keep 
whatsoever thou shalt sow, that also thou shalt reap. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Heliotrope's Soliloquy to Mrs. T. R. Walton by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org Let others bring from foreign shore The glittering gem, the shining ore, Rare trophies from the coral caves And hidden wealth of ocean waves To grace the bridal hall. You floral queens, you roses white, Bathed in the moonbeam's yellow light, You'll smile in many a quaint design, And help the banquet room to line, But not the diadem. My starry flowers, this purple heath, She'll gather for that trailing wreath, For my faint breath of rare perfume Is only for the bridal room, The bride, the bridal crown. To watch with me her trembling sigh, the golden pansy's modest eye shall only glance from out my bower with me proclaim the nuptial hour and seal the holy bond end of poem this recording is in the public domain a problem by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org by larry wilson my heart is perplexed, though I've tried to discover an answer to solve what it is that I miss. Though I've questioned myself more than twenty times over, there seems no reply to a question like this. My friends meet me gladly with words kindly spoken, salutations of praises and sometimes a kiss, and looks sent along with a sweet flower token. I find in my room there is something I miss. The blaze up the chimney this evening is talking. The wind and the shutter hum sad an old tune. A cloud o'er the heavens is leisurely walking. A few early snowflakes are vexing the moon. Pale Luna, your countenance seemeth too sober. But why should I murmur or wonder at this? The flame of the woodland died out with October. The birds, too, are gone. There is something I miss. I stir down the embers, and here in the firelight I read the home paper a late train has brought, and into the lives of the absent an insight I take. Do they ever of me have a thought? How strange the words sound when no answer is given. Ah, the tone of a friend would to-night ensure bliss, and the faces of loved ones would seem like a heaven of angels. Alas, there is something I miss will it always be thus is this one missing measure to cripple my verse and sadden my song what a joy it is to regain a lost treasure and in the heart's casket the setting makes strong but i have grown weary these figures of trying i wonder if others make failures like this a smile ah you solve then the truth underlying this problem and know what it is that I miss. Madisonville, Kentucky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Palace by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org. I built me a little palace somewhere in the Etherland wherein my soul might revel and rest at my command the spot a royal summit i let my will select and fancy came inspecting with thought the architect we went down to the quarry for the foundation rock and purchased hewn and polished love's marble corner block for years we toiled together and one day warm and sweet i woke and found my palace before me and complete it was a gorgeous building the window lights of red came from the sunset's furnace or northern light instead each peak each tower and turret the sunlight's love had won and straight there came a voice from heaven and said 
well done i planted a grove beyond it and hedged up the terraced yard and i dug a groove so a brooklet could play on the level sward i wanted a flower to cheer me and off on a breezy slope i scattered the seed of roses and the purple heliotrope i peopled the rooms with volumes of men with talents rare who climbed upon fame's spire and waved their banners there i purchased the costliest paintings and swung them from the walls and music like harps of heaven resounded throughout the halls i gave a royal banquet the nuptial feast was spread and then when all was ready there love and i were wed but when the guests departed a rap came on the door and a gaunt figure faced me i ne'er had seen before my name she said is envy i wish to stop with you your dwelling just completed the inmates must be few her breath like fumes of sulphur into my face was blown and like a demon's curses was her departing tone the night came on and fingers tapped on the beveled glass a face looked in the window with eyes that shone like brass but love beheld the visage and o'er the window drew a shade that shut suspicion for ever from my view and then a ponderous knocking bombarded at the door and like an earthquake's tremor upheaved the palace floor i glanced into the keyhole and like the brand of cain i saw on slander's forehead a dark and bloody stain i barred the palace entrance and turning in the hall we faced another figure more dreadful than them all he said my name is ruin unbidden here i stand to curse your happy homestead and desolate your land the lichen i have sprinkled upon your crumbling tower the ivy and the myrtle shall choke each blooming flower and then he smote the castle it trembled to its base and fell no no i shouted and laughed out in his face you cannot wreck our palace love is the cornerstone and we are master workmen i said in jocund tone he seized his trailing garments departed with a groan and love and i together were once more left alone next day as they debated what course to next pursue i heard a sweet voice calling love said the tone he knew the step low as a mother's upon the nursery floor was like advancing music that halted at our door as when a fairy's castle yields to a magic key our door swung on the hinges the guest was sympathy come in our worthy sister i heard love then repeat for happiness without you could never be complete and while we sat together weaving our garland sweet for many a bridal altar for many a burial sheet we heard another footstep and like an angel sent there came and smiled upon us the face we loved content the circle was completed my palace stands sublime still on that cloudland summit and laughs at threats of time no curses thunder o'er us no heavy rains can fall for heaven's open window slants sunshine over all end of poem this recording is in the public domain death of summer by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org summer's dying close the shutters make the light subdued and sweet the last accent that she utters i'll record here at her feet see the pulses quiver faintly but her heart alas tis still see how pale she lies and saintly feel her hands they're white and chill close the eyes made sad from weeping smooth the tangles from her head leave her like an angel sleeping friends are here to view the dead see 
the rose a tear is dropping as she leans above her face at the door the lily stopping finds her handkerchief of lace there the two like sisters sorrow as above the course they bend planning for the sad to-morrow for the burial of a friend then the daisy from the mountain that in mourning shawl was dressed brought a snowdrop from the fountain lay it on the summer's breast to the pillow crept the lilacs but the flowers at her throat were the heliotrope and smilax this was gained by casting vote and the jasmine sought her fingers while the fuchsias kissed her hair at her lip a violet lingers to deny them who would dare then the autumn's sunny treasure came the sturdy golden rod for the coffin took the measure for the grave removed the sod long and mournful the procession that i watched across the hill for to you i'll make confession autumn doth my spirit kill drives me from the scene of sadness while on poison nature feeds decks her out in robes of gladness to conceal the heart that bleeds at the summer's grave there lingers none more sad to drop a tear than the friend whose trembling fingers write this in memoriam here end of poem this recording is in the public domain Spring and Summer by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Fraser Prescott I heard a footstep on the hill The little brook began to trill I looked a sweet and childlike face Reflected like a blooming vase Was smiling from the water clear with buttercups behind her ear. A flock of swallows hove in sight. On came the summer, clad in white, with sunshine falling from her hair, upon her shoulders white and bare, and pressing through the tangled grass, a daisy rose to watch her pass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Under the Snow by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Fraser Prescott What have you hidden down under the snow, So dear that you weep when the northern blasts blow? Why your face pressed to the cold window pane? Longing to mingle your tears with the rain, Is there something down under the snow? Is it only a blossom, a summer's delight, That is freezing and dying this cold, bitter night? That is only a fancy, the floweret is warm, And the drift has enfolded it safe from the storm. Is there something yet under the snow? Something near to the heart down under the snow That has robbed the wan cheek of its once carmine glow That has stolen the beam of the eye-tears instead Bespeak how in anguish the sore heart hath bled For a little child under the snow For a dear little prattler that littered the floor And laughed as he tumbled your work o'er and o'er for a little gold head that made sunny the room, Now brightening the darkness and chill of the tomb, It is dreaming out under the snow. Only resting a while in garments all white, Away from the blackness and sin of tonight, Away from the vice and the wrong of the street, Not heeding the song of the rain or the sleet, Still sleeping down under the snow. How many a mother her darling would lay In the last narrow home hide her treasure away If only to know its soul was at rest With an innocent heart in an innocent breast Far, far down under the snow End of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. The Prettiest Girl in Town by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Pat Mathewson England, 2017 The Prettiest Girl in Town Have you e'er seen her, this beautiful girl, with that classical head and complexion of pearl, so pale and enchanting that sometimes I deem her a sweet revelation as when in a dream, through wild variations of trouble and fear, you suddenly feel that an angel is near. Now guess, if you can, without half of that frown, for to me she's the prettiest girl in the town. The poets all sing of these quaint highland girls, with enchanting dimples and loose tangled curls, or they weave a love tale from her budding lips glow, while chasing the reindeer or mountains of snow. This is only the skill of a well-tinctured pen, dipped in romance's cup for the praises of men, who value this maid in the coarse homespun gown, something less than the prettiest girl in the town. You must all have watched the calm light of her eyes, and ethereal figure with heavy drawn assize, pondered often in secret of some magic gift to win you this face so like a snowdrift. I would whisper a secret on Valentine's Day with Cupid commune in a sly cunning way, as only in dream she is thine, for a crown could not purchase the prettiest girl in the town. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I am musing tonight by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I am musing tonight in the firelight's glow, and watching the pictures that come and go, like dissolving views on a magic screen is the witchery of this changing scene. Though half I'm dreaming, though half awake, I fear to move lest the spell I break lest my fairy castles will break and fall, and down will tumble each beautiful wall. Thus still in a stupor I sit and gaze at the glowing embers and wanton blaze. I am smiling at fancy. She tries in vain to lure me along with the maddening train that follow her footsteps, that to her cling, as flowers that garland the steps of spring. In moody silence I sit apart, till memory conquers my sullen heart. Sweet memory, sprite of my golden past, your tinsel veil o'er me is cast, subdued I yield like one enchained, and yet my freedom is only feigned. Back through the aisles of years that are gone, a willing captive you lead me on, where I gleaned unbidden the joys of youth, while the world was blossoming with love and truth. Before my heart could interpret a sigh, or a teardrop shadow creep into my eye, ere I'd missed from the circle of friendship's chain the link once lost that we ne'er regain, the future to me was a vast expanse, its depth I could solve at a single glance, knew not of the troubles that torture the soul hidden away in its sober fold. Yet tonight, as I dream in the gathering gloom, only friends that are dear softly enter my room. Those who gladdened my life in its season of pain, like a gleam of the sunshine along with the rain. These are the guests that encircle my hearth, who come gliding like spirits back to the earth. What communion we hold, only those ever know, who sit musing alone in the firelight's glow. In the poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Curl by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org by Pat Mathewson. England, 2017. A Curl. Tonight, as I turned back the pages of a book time had fingered before, and whose leaves held the odour of ages, and the imprints of much usage wore, 
a little brown curl I discovered that fell from the book to the floor. Had I sinned, heaven grant me its pardon, did a lover's sad tear page the spot? Who pressed there that gem of the garden, the sweet flower, forget-me-not? It lay as if carved on a gravestone, and all of its sweetness forgot. I held the curl up to the lamplight, and watching the gleam of its gold, there I heard with the rush of the midnight a sad little story is told. But I promised the sacred old volume its secret I would not unfold. But I would that the world knew its sorrow, the story I must not reveal. But go to your bookcase to-morrow, and each to your own heart appeal, and you know why the tattered old volume the little cow tries to conceal. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Somebody's Face to M. A. B. by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org. The blossoms are gone from the garden, but tis not of them I would speak. I want a sweet rose for my verses, like one that's in somebody's cheek. A red rose to kiss and to fondle, whose leaves will not wither or die to gladden each moment and banish the winter thoughts out of the sky i want a low ripple of music to flow through these lines of my choice like a zephyr that moved through the summer now dwelling in somebody's voice a song that will be full of fragrance so sweet that its magic of words will bring back the balm of the june time its memories glad and the birds the skies are so sunless and dreary unless i can find a deep blue to mix with the clouds of november they'll still wear the dark sober hue but memory shows a bright heaven reflected in somebody's eye and thinking to-day of its beauty the gray becomes blue in the sky my dear little friend of the summer did you think in the meshes of song your sweet rosy face would be tangled by a memory cunning and strong that the eyes looking now on this pattern would find it so easy to trace and delight as i do in its beauty the beauty of somebody's face end of poem this recording is in the public domain goodbye maggie by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org Goodbye, Maggie, I must leave you. Far away from you I roam, far away from friends and loved ones, and your pretty cottage home. O'er my soul a twilight gathers that is deepening into night, but from out the shadowy distance shines a soft, familiar light. It is memory's beacon lantern, or it arching is your name. Rounded recollections cluster, as the moth about the flame though the future tries to cheat us throwing many miles between brighter burns the little taper as the distance intervenes good-bye maggie will you miss me absence conquers many a heart plucks the roses from the garland tears the evergreen apart enters at the open lattice as a guest unbidden not draws the curtain or the window writes upon the door forgot oh what mean these idle sayings and whence come these idle fears as i fold you to my bosom on my face i feel your tears tears they are a silent language that interpret best the heart and i love you for them darling good-bye maggie we must part end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Hermit's Farewell by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Farewell! That sad and bitter word, it stirs my soul tonight. As I sit crouching in my cave above the faggot's light, Strange ghostly figures dance and flit along the cold, damp walls. 
the black snake glares his drowsy eyes and from his dungeon crawls the toad croaks near my humble fire is loth to hop away and knows that ne'er again for him will i ambush lay the bats flit idly to and fro and mice romp through my cell and e'en the wind that moans without repeats that word farewell i move and think tis some weird dream then mutter tis my brain for here around my throbbing brow seems clamped a heavy chain and like a prisoner doomed to die to-morrow at the stake i count the hours as they fly and dread the morning's break for friends will come to lead me forth through frescoed hall and room to homes where kindred ties await i fear the hermit's doom they've tempted me i fain would rest here on the dungeon mould than dream on beds where curtains swing with sunbeams in each fold for beasts and birds and creeping things have owned me as their guest when man would turn me from his door with cruel word or jest and as i served my scanty meal in supplicating legs the cricket and the katydid would join my evening praise god pitied me my loneliness he made a sweet content i found companions in the stars that from the heavens bent his flowers were friends the goldenrod smiled in its yellow hood a sentinel about my door the purple thistle stood but look the morning's amber hue steals on the easter skies farewell farewell when death has closed these dim and longing eyes in peace to slumber here entombed will be the boon i crave and those who spurn the hermit's home shall shun the hermit's grave in the poem this recording is in the public domain a window i love by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox.org. There's an old-fashioned building somewhere in the town that looks on a noisy street, and no matter how often I pass up and down, at the window sweet faces I meet, little faces that literally beam on the street, untutored in life's trying school, that seemed fashioned, my friends, as if just to repeat for our lesson the sweet golden rule. Oft they give us a smile, when a frown we return a kiss prompts the pout of their lip and though we go by with a step proud and stern how lightly beside us they trip catching the leaves that drift in at the door those pretty leaves rusted with rain that sigh with our hearts when the summer is o'er and that seem to wear traces of pain there is many a window with drapings of lace where the clematis bloom is entwined where the moss seems a part of the urn and the vase where the awning with satin is lined where wealth sits aloof garments dripping with pearls like a mermaid's sole god of the spear but the faces i love with their billows of curls you must ne'er think of looking for here for the window i love has no hangings of plush neither festooned as if for display and yet i have seen it at evening's soft hush decked out in a wondrous array of cambrics and calicoes sashes and curls little aprons and many a toy more plainly to speak there are three little girls and the king of the house is a boy how i love to halt here with a satisfied look i have watched corinne smoothing a curl i have seen little richard lean over his book i have heard mary singing with pearl and oh I have thanked them again and again for the problems of patience and love that they solve on a weirs for my less practiced brain when I pause by the window I love. Richmond, Kentucky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thistledown by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. Thistledown I saw a little child one day Blowing some thistledown away. 
how light they flew the wings of thought grew weary as their course was sought and even the boy with heart as light sighed when he failed to trace their flight but as by chance out of the air one fell upon his sunny hair i saw the tiny sail unfurl and faintly fan a slender curl a fairy's boat it seemed to be and yet a pirate sailed the sea and anchored on a golden wave that hid no evil deed no grave that thought did heaven foresee the doom from off his curl i shook the bloom i know not where it chanced to fall in garden park or castle wall a desert sand may scorch its root a crystal brook it may pollute a different course from mine it took and i the path at once forsook i only know that summer day far from the child twas blown away and a poem this recording is in the public domain bitter memories by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson to rev h t wilson a picture is haunting my memory tonight while i doze in the warmth of an early firelight as we strive to remove from the soul an old strain thus the outline i've tried to erase from my brain but a spectre stands near with a sepulchral face and over my hearthstone the same scene doth trace she colors the landscape and scoffs at my tears as i gaze on the wreck of scarce twenty-one years twas the home of my boyhood in ruins it stood and autumn had saddened the meadow and wood the old locust grove where the crows used to build the ploughshare and harrow together had tilled not a sprig of broom sedge did the hillside adorn but here and there stacked was the newly shocked corn not a wild flower bloomed through my heart ran a chill as i bowed by the spring at the foot of the hill no trickle of water fell soft on my ear unless was the sound of a swift falling tear for time in his raving had paused here to drink and i found only dregs as i gasped on the brink long i stood and i gazed like one in a trance and i shuddered as toward me the spectre advanced did the chill of her hand then my heart penetrate dead it seemed as i leaned on the old garden gate where the sweet william bloomed on the old-fashioned walk towered and flourished the rank moline stock where the raspberry vines purpled over the fence the iron weed stood just as proud as a prince but where was the summer house under whose shade i had gathered the grapes and my sisters had played where oh where i exclaimed too unnerved then to fear are the joys of my youth gone was hissed in my ear as the blind lead the blind it seemed i was led over stubble and thorns till my feet ached and bled then we stood by a door that had rotted apart here the thistle had broken its soft downy heart i glanced toward the mantel an owl hooted there and a rat made its nest in my mother's old chair oh god i repeated tis too hard to bear and i knelt on the threshold in low fervent prayer why papa a little voice called soft and clear as she climbed on my knee and i kissed off a tear what a long nap you've had why mamma's at tea now papa wake up and come on with me my darling i whispered and pressed to my face a cheek that was soft as a billow of lace what if the old home cannot weather the storms when a foretaste of heaven i hold in my arms september seventh eighteen eighty five end of poem this recording is in the public domain
An Acrostic by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org. Daughter's College. Muse, come nearer and assist my feeble rhyme. Undertaking nothing dearer, greater, nothing showeth time. Here's the spot where you, awaking, taught my infant mind to think. Even as the morning breaking, richer grows to red from pink. Searched you with me for the treasures, called the blossoms half unblown, opened them within my measures, letting each bloom as my own. Lifted to my sight a heaven, e'en while lying on your breast, graciously for it I've striven, ever hoping for the best. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Angel Visitor to J. T. C. by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org. We talked together in the twilight gloom, her friend and mine, of scenes and times long past. And in the shadows of the quiet room, it seemed to me an angel form was cast. I saw, and yet my friend seemed not to see, the face familiar with the gentle eyes whose presence sanctified the past for me and made for him a glorious paradise i felt the pressure of a vanished hand upon my own and heard a soft robe sweep the same has floated from the spirit land and often trailed the chamber where i sleep i strove to break the spell that bound his heart that held his spirit as a bondsman tied when like a rose that shakes its leaves apart her garments rustled close his chair beside and yet he knew it not the angel face bent close above his own so doth the moon sometimes unseen bend from her heavenly place to kiss a flower that falls asleep too soon awake my friend i said too soon you sleep an angel figure stands beside your chair and i alone the sacred vigil keep but as he woke she vanished into air oh friend of mine and friend of hers i cried a hollowed presence is so soon forgot she walked on earth an angel by your side the same as now and yet you knew it not End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Keep a Bright Face, Darling by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org Keep a bright face, darling, though the task is hard. Life holds up before you many a bright-faced card. Though the clouds have gathered and darkened all the way, rainbows or you arching tinge the skies of gray you have said what sunshine leaked in with the rain only brought new sorrow brought but grief and pain keep a bright face darling set your scales anew weigh again the sunshine and the raindrops too and you'll find your measure hitherto was wrong keep a bright face darling and on your lips a song heaven decrees our burdens and our faith god tries but a broken spirit he cannot despise keep a bright face darling even while i write in the fields of midnight blossom stars of light though the morning cometh with a streak of gray tis a hint of sunshine and a perfect day journey slow and patient with a purpose strong keep a bright face darling on your lips a song End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Neighbor's Mill to M. Barlow by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org I love to sit here at the window sill when the sun falls asleep in the west and watch the gray twilight walk over the hill in garments of night partly dressed and see through the rooms of my neighbor's mill how she creeps like an unbidden guest i love the low hum of the numberless wheels they echo the heartbeats of time 
each unto my pen its purpose reveals like the magic of meter and rhyme or as to the soul that in penitence kneels dot the sound of a slow vesper chime we have been friends together this old mill and i yes friends that are true tried and strong if over us gather a gray winter sky we faced it sometimes with a song or braved it in silence scarce knowing why as together we labored along i fancy sometimes as i sit here alone with the calm of the night in my heart when from the low roof the pigeons have flown and the stars their sweet stories impart that this mill unto me in a strange undertone is speaking as heart unto heart that it bids me look into the granary room where the yellow wheat is packed and anon to glance in with the sundown's bloom where the snowy flower is sacked so i look and it seems in the deepening gloom their clouds upon clouds are stacked what else do i scan through the moonlight's lace that scallops the window panes why the dear old miller's honest face he's counting his losses and gains and methinks on his visage i can trace a look that my own heart pains ah think of the thousands his bounty feeds we beggars encircle his door while he scatters alike his bundle of seeds to the humble the rich and the poor sure there's a reward for such generous deeds a reward that is brighter than ore but the lights have gone out of my neighbor's mill and pale grows the red in the west the night has crept up to my own window-sill and pillowed my head on her breast while over the way how peaceful and still the old mill's asleep and at rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain dripping springs by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox.org by eva davis Dripping Springs To My Brother D. G. Slaughter Something moves my pen, its former chime I fain would drop, and gladly lose the rhyme That lights my verse as ore lights up a mine. If on my canvas I could curve and line these quiet hills, And for an hour could say I'd caught the warmth that on the landscape lay, And that I dreamed as artists sometimes dream, who blend their smiles with meadow, mound, and stream. I am indeed a child worn out at play, and weary of my game, I long to stray to other haunts, to other heights unknown, and claim that Raphael's brush as half my own. Alas, forsaken by my muse, I turn and backward glance, she beckons my return. She floods the old familiar fields with light, she bids me pause, take up my pen, and write. Tis scarce yet dawn, the leaves awake, and in my brow the raindrops shake the only remnant of the cloud that pealed last night with thunder loud, the only hint that here with flowers come sometimes shadows, sometimes showers. The morning is a dream of bliss, the breeze not unlike love's first kiss, my soul expands, I drink the dew, it gives my veins a deeper hue. I halt where, like a singing rill, the spring comes dripping o'er the hill. I fill my cup again, again, I drink for all, good health to men. I hear the rising bell's faint sound, the porter makes his usual round, and black-eyed Easter trips along the kitchen porch with smile and song. We find a poem in her churn, an essence in her coffee urn we note the pale dyspeptic's cheek is growing rosy round and sleek his torpid stomach forced to fast here soon partakes the rich repast breakfast over round the springs the guests assemble some in swings and those of a romantic turn stroll two and two in search of fern for them the woods have more than speech a calm that to the heart doth reach that perfect peace of mind and soul the sacred book to us hath told i deem that morning holds more charms than day hides elsewhere in her arms but when she folds her shadowy tent 
and stars laugh in the firmament a newer phase doth nature take and in the heart new joys awake some love the ballroom's din and glare as soft they trip some favorite air some love to lounge about the spring some frequent spots where hammocks swing and others saunter to the pool their tired limbs to bathe and cool but give me just the shady rook that o'er the dripping spring doth look and let me watch the bright lamps flash and let me listen to the splash of the old spring that drips and drips to cool and cure the fever lips who could forget the landlord's vim or cottage room so neat and trim who would not leave the city's glare the heat the dust and stifling air who would not part with all his wealth to gain at dripping springs his health end of poem this recording is in the public domain in memoriam by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org they tell me she is dead that we no more upon her quiet face can rest our eyes yet long we for it as a weary bird longs all in vain to rest upon a cloud that heavenward floats and yet there's solace still in musing on her faith so strong and pure that recognized through pain god's every wish and dreaded not to taste death's cup if so by him decreed i was not there to hold her hand it chilled within the orphan's palm until by angels clasped i could not twine the flowers she so much loved about her shroud or speak a word of comfort to the friends that sobbed and kissed the lips grown strangely cold that never parted but to speak in praise when others tried to censure but my heart beats sad to-day the measures of my verse and teardrops fall so falls the autumn rain upon her grave and drifting are the leaves upon the mound that loving friends have raised in memory of her whose spirit rests to-day with god end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Old Orchard Trees by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Old Orchard Trees Why cut them away, the dear old trees? They never did aught of harm, But scattered their perfume out to the breeze And sheltered the birds from the storm. For an age they have stood on the town's outer meads, the skirmish and battle have braved alike they have gazed on the war's bloody deeds and the white flag of peace as it waved but you cut them away my pleading is vain in their shade moves the carpenter's hands i watched him to-day as he levelled his plane and he spoke of the architect's plans then a wave of distress in my heart flowed anew for dearly i love each old tree ah me many secrets are hidden from you that the apple trees whispered to me i used to go by in the sweet morning air like incense arose from the spot it would crowd from my heart some pain gnawing there while the world with its cares was forgot here i've heard the first news of the bluebird and dove and the round silver note of the thrush a concert with sweet variations of love seemed pouring from tree and from bush. I walk there today as an accent profane that falls on the heart and the ear. I heard the harsh echo of hammer and plane and the pant of a mill in the rear. So I muffled my face with the veil that I wore. Time, that moment of pain, can't appease unless like the birds from the scene i can soar and like them forget the old trees and a poem this recording is in the public domain
On the Hilltop Grow the Daisies to Carrie Rogers by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org I chanced to stroll not long ago to a green valley that you know, for everything about the town was strange and on me seemed to frown, and so I wandered off alone to seek the friends from youth I'd known. The brook came dashing down the hill, the same old song to hum and trill with glances shy and kisses sweet it wound its ribbon at my feet and laughed aloud at my delight it was indeed a comic sight to see me o'er the brooklet bend and greet again an old-time friend so thus i sat perhaps an hour until i spied a human flower a little maid it seemed to be with steps directed straight to me her dress was pink her bonnet white her eyes were blue and round and bright some daisies in her hand she held but where they came from would she tell were questions that my eyes portrayed and she the answer quickly made upon the hilltop high they grow the path is there by which you go but if you get them you must climb she said unconscious of the rhyme i glanced along the rocky ledge the daisies nodded o'er the edge and just as far as i could see they waved their ruffled caps to me bright eyes that never had grown old their hearts content to me foretold and i resolved the path to try that seemed to end so near the sky and so i started up alone a way that seemed with mosses sown a ponderous clod rolled on the track a briar reached and pulled me back a lizard on the pathway played and halfway up i paused afraid keep on the little girl replied a better path is near your side she pulled the thorn from off my gown i heard the clod go plunging down and then she clasped with mine her hand and led me up to daisy land the hours we spent together there were hallowed as the hours of prayer and when she left me in the vale the sunlight suddenly grew pale but she had taught me this strange truth forgot or never learned in youth it seems a little song in rhyme to reach the daisies you must climb bardstown kentucky end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ella Lee by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org Where is Ella, Ella Lee? How I've missed her childish glee, Missed her step so light and airy, Missed the darling little fairy. She was nimble as a fawn, Lovely as the blush of dawn, And her voice sweet as the rill Gliding down the glassy hill. Where is she? I've missed her so, surely someone ought to know i have called her in the crowd called her soft and called her loud called her sad and called her sweet in the house and on the street yet she does not seem to hear though i've called her far and near hark i hear a blackbird's note and he wears a brand new coat surely some sweet word he brings on his iridescent wings let me hail him by this tree listen now he sings to me tells me in his honest way that our darling's gone away far so far away she roams into other hearts and homes ah the budding little flower sweetens every empty hour making earth a dream of bliss by the magic of her kiss Though she fled like a sunbeam, still I hold a treasured dream. And were she to skip today in her easy, childish way, to the playground of my heart, childhood's gate would fly apart, and she'd find the violet's face smiling still in memory's vase. Green and fresh the springtime sod that her dainty feet had trod. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What is the West Wind Saying? By Kate Slaughter McKinney 
Read for LibriVox.org. Oh, what is the west wind saying? It whispers so strange in my ear, as if some sad message delaying from friends who are absent and dear. It laughs with the leaves on the treetops and bows as the cloudlets go by and plays with the flowers for hours and hours, yet for me has only a sigh. Oh, what is the west wind singing? Tis rocking the birds in the nest, and over the world it is flinging the emblems of quiet and rest. New comfort it brings to the mother and hushes the babe on her knee, singing softly to her and the tired laborer, yet sadly and strangely to me. Oh, what is the west wind showing? New faces look strangely in mine. Stranger tints in the sunset are glowing, somber shadings of amber and wine. Far away the blue hills seem to beckon me back to a sweet cottage home, where the rose and the vine round the doorway entwine. Alas, that from them I must roam. Oh, what is the west wind asking? Why question a stranger like me? If a friend, why so perfect the masking? Your counterpart glad what I see. Ah, a friend in disguise. What is sweeter? Come, let us together commune. If you bring but a kiss from the loved ones I miss, I can ask of you no greater boon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Mountain Stream by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org, by Felicity Twelve, Down Under. Glad is childish laughter from a childish throng, sweet as bird voice after daybreak is your song. Racing down the mountain on your shining feet, waltzing at the fountain to its love song sweet. On and on you travel, leaving me behind, like a silken ravel with the weeds you wind, laughing at distresses, braving battles too, who your trouble guesses, and your sorrow, who? Tell me as you hurry through the stubble field, why not stop to worry? But no frowns revealed. Sometime you must weary of this constant strife. When the clouds are dreary, tire you not of life. Of the dead leaves drifted on your saddened face, and a snowflake sifted from the cloudland place. Yet you ne'er repineth, but a light content with the sun that shineth and the rainstorm sent. Teach me half the beauty that your heart must know. And through the fields of duty, like you, will I go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pen Pictures by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Pen Pictures. Written during a snowstorm. I love the snowflakes in the air. When from the heavens they downward dart, I love to watch them sailing there, Like thoughts freed from a poet's heart, Uncertain which, the earth or sky, Should claim their last abiding place, And yet I watch them drifting by And strive to join the airy race. The railway cars, like spirits, glide Through many a mountain's haunted tomb. Above the river's solemn tide, Along the ravine's chilly room, on on through cedar groves we wind that yesterday a zephyr wooed today they stand with heads inclined a sad and stricken multitude the sky bends low with heavy clouds and from the long slope of a hill the pines look down in spotless shrouds upon a valley wider still a tiny stream runs breathless by affrighted at the ghostly sight the sun sleeps in the western sky, and twilight deepens into night. The train glides on. Each mountain scene is like a panoramic view. Though oft I toward the window lean to scan some object that I knew, I see a log hut in the vale, and rustic children glad and warm, a mother's face, forlorn and pale, 
looks out upon the winter storm the little cascade down the glen is falling like a mourner's tears the wind shrieks by and from his den jack frost hangs out his icy spears defying e'en the piling drift and while the winter king he warns lo through a cloud above the cliff the young moon shakes her silver horns orion next his rage revealed as if he too the insult felt he raises high his club and shield and swings his bright sword from his belt and like a demon downward driven the howling wind his dungeon seeks for nature sees the host of heaven resent her cold and heartless freaks the storm grew still and i could see the clouds above the cliff disband e'en as the wave on galilee grew docile at the lord's command and as i shake from off my pen the ink that stamped these pictures chill i seem to hear these words again breathe softly o'er me peace be still january eighteen eighty six end of poem this recording is in the public domain to mother by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org i heard a song last night mother a song you used to sing when like a little bird mother with weak and unfledged wing i played about your flowing gown contented with your smile though all the world should cast a frown upon your happy child the song i heard last night mother came floating through the door as if some angel voice mother had sung it oft before but oh i missed the patient pause the low accustomed tone i turned away heartsick because the voice was not your own those dear old songs you used to sing that made my heart beats rhyme have bubbled up from memory's spring ah many and many a time when thirsty or with thought oppressed when tired of the sunshine when longing for the shade and rest i hear those songs of thine they're just as low and sweet to-day as when i heard them first and though i am so far away the field-glass though reversed holds still a picture that i love three faces four with mine another looks from heaven above a little face like thine end of poem this recording is in the public domain the broken heart to miss f b by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org he brought me a heart one morning brought me a heart to mend and he said i shall never forget it twas broken by your friend the wound will grow deeper and wider he said in a sadder tone unless you devise some method to place it against her own then i crept away to my chamber but a thought like a silver stream kept trickling along the wayside that bordered my restless dream so i hid his heart in a lily when the dawn began to break in a beautiful water lily that grew on the rim of a lake yes down on a snowy pillow in a cradle warm and deep i laid the little foundling and a ripple rocked it to sleep the dawn came up with blushes and shook from her gown the dew and i heard the song of the skylark as into the clouds he flew but the heart dreamed on in the lily and i went at the close of day and found that my little treasure was chilled by the foam and spray so i warmed it upon my bosom then cradled it back on the wave but i feared that the lily's offspring was doomed to a watery grave so i watched till the daylight vanished through the sunset's purple bars till the night climbed over the willows and lit up the moon and stars i thought i heard your footstep and low in the reeds and grass i crouched that there unnoticed i might behold you pass you came in your regal beauty and bright as the weird fireflies that illuminated the waving rushes 
I saw your glorious eyes. You kneeled on the mossy margin. I counted the lilies there. Two buds and a creamy blossom were fastened in your hair. Another was drawn from the water, and, pushing the reeds apart, I saw twas the very lily wherein I had hidden the heart. You pinned it low down on your bodice, half hidden it lay in the lace, and you passed by, a twofold existence, a new light enriching your face. And though I am absent and distant, methinks I can still hear the tone of a heart that with happy emotion is beating, I close to your own. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A year ago, in memory of my dear friend Scotta P. Proctor, by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org. A year ago, I held in mine her hand and felt the pulses quicken and dissolve, while o'er her face a light from heaven's own land seemed all the mystery of death to solve. She raised her weary eyes to mine and sighed sighed as a flower o'er which the storm clouds bend when long the promised sunlight is denied and cold and heavy rains from heaven descend she tried to speak i knelt beside her bed that one last wish she might to me impart a whisper came and then the spirit fled like some sweet thought long prisoned in the heart a year ago i twined the lilies white about her shroud and with the coffin's lace, for she had loved them. All the long, long night they pressed their waxen lips upon her face. I heard the funeral bell toll, sad and long. My heart reverberates today the sound. And then there came a prayer, a pause, a song, and blossoms next were heaped upon a mound. I turned aside and homeward bent my way, alas the face i loved so long not there sweet memories arose to gild my day but sadder ones to mock my heart's despair where is she now you think the grave can hide a friend so true within its dungeon deep ah no she walketh ever by my side and watches o'er me when i chance to sleep we stroll abroad oft at the twilight's hour to memory's garden. Under memory's tree she pulls the silver mask from many a flower and reads its tender secrets all to me. She guides my pen along uncertain heights where unattended I could never go. The candle of success she often lights when the flame flickers and the wick burns low. She leads me to the grave and says, Not here, but there and points me to the heavenly gate and when upon my cheek there falls a tear for sometimes yet my heart grows desolate i feel upon my face her own soft hand and glimpses of her robe sometimes have seen oh happy thought how strong is friendship's band when out of heaven an angel friend can lean a year ago sad sad that parting day and sadder still the last the long ado death called the angel of my heart away and now she opens heaven to my view may sixteenth eighteen eighty six end of poem this recording is in the public domain a christmas peep by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org by Pat Mathewson, 2017, England. I passed a toy window, and many pretty things old Santa Claus had labelled and tied with silken strings. A kite was bought for Jimmy, a little stove for Kate, a doll for Capitola, for Charlie a new slate, a silver knife for father, for mother dear a fan and the prettiest little fiddle was bought for baby Dan. Hang up your little stockings and keep the fireside bright. Old Santa Claus is coming. 
His sleigh is out tonight. Ten dollars worth of candy was emptied in his sleigh, and peanuts by the barrel to be eaten Christmas Day. His lap was full of toys, little drums and little ships, little buggies, little ponies, and little riding whips. The baby dolls were sleeping in their cradles snug, but the others all were peeping from underneath his rug. Old Santa was so happy that as he drove along, he jingled ever sleigh bell and sang a Christmas song. So don't forget him, children. He's on the way tonight. Hang up your little stockings and keep the fireside bright. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winnie's Christmas Eve by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Pat Mathewson, England, 2017 Poor little Winnie had plodded the street Up and down, through the rain and sleet Singing her innocent songs all day In a sweet and merry childish way Asking sometimes for the night a bed A bowl of milk or crust of bread She had sung on the corners and city square but no one had time to remember her there. Numbers had passed her who never before failed to toss in her basket a penny or more. It is Christmas. Their hearts are so happy and light, but poor little Winnie's forgotten tonight. Chilly and rayless the sky seems to frown. The clouds, too, are shaking the soft snowflakes down. Over her pretty face, waltzing they fall, into her bonnet and folds of the shawl. Think of it, fathers with firesides warm. Poor little Winnie is out in the storm. Backward and forward the tired feet go. From her lips little ripples of music still flow. Homeless and hungry, still begging for bread, receiving a curse and reproaches instead. Shivering with fear in the pitiless light, Poor little Winnie is starving tonight. Alone in the street, yet the little lips move, trying to echo those accents of love. Ah, think of that, mothers, those syllables sweet, of your darlings, how fondly the same you repeat. You are trying so faithful to lead them aright when poor little Winnie is freezing tonight. See her, how slowly she's moving along, her lips are too icy to echo the song. How changed are her features, how feeble, how weak. A pallor creeps over her forehead and cheek. Perhaps it is only the flickering light. Ah, no, little Winnie is dying tonight. The revel is over in parlour and park. The bonfire vanished, the street is so dark. The snowflakes are falling in many a heap. The city is quiet at rest and asleep, but there in the shadows, scarce out of sight, little Winnie lies dead in a snowdrift tonight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Heart's Little Room to Lizzie, Dora, and Grace by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org. There's a dear little chamber somewhere in my heart that opens to only you three. Though many have tried to unfasten the door, they picked at the lock till their fingers were sore, for to file it apart vainly proved every art, and in vain have they sought for the key. Many times I go into this quaint little room, the pictures to change or adjust. I see your sweet faces grouped there with my own, and I wonder that I feel so strangely alone. But about through the room I move briskly the broom, and sweep from the corners the dust. The windows I throw open wide to the air, to let in the breeze and the light. I watch the sunbeams in their mischievous way creep into the curtains like children at play. And while I am there I have no thought of care, for the room is so warm and so bright. And oft I look up from the balcony's brink to a sky that shows many a hue. A vine clamors thickly the window above, where my birds sing together their rhythm of love. 
my thoughts with them link for i sit here and think and all of my song is for you ah some day i know you will come back to me to rest in this queer little room and that's why so tidy and clean it is kept the air always fragrant the floor always swept for i long here to see my sweet roses three as from buds into blossoms they bloom then come when you may be the sky black or blue the lock will unclasp as of yore for unless death should come introspecting my heart and break down its barriers and wrench them apart a friend that is true will be watching for you ever waiting to unbar the door end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Three Muses by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org Methought three muses in disguise as angels tapped upon my door, and a dim light from paradise fell on the instruments they bore. One held a zithern in her hand and lightly swept the throbbing strings, and oh, it seemed a fairyland was stirred by unexpected wings i held my breath and prayed that night would be extended into day but with the thought came morning's light and lo the echo died away an artist's canvas pink with dawn the second angel turned to me her brush strayed o'er a grassy lawn and dotted here and there a tree all blooming in immortal dyes with streamlets winding clear and blue where looking from the far-off skies the clouds were mirrored to my view but when the sun blazed from the sky and on the painted landscape shone i heard the artist angel's sigh and when i looked she too had flown the scratching of a pen i heard and saw a face demure and sweet with inspiration every word i begged the angel to repeat a thousand zephyrs fanned the air tuned low with hum of birds and bees no need of zithern music where aeolian harps were in the trees no need of artists to rehearse upon the canvas nature when i saw the world revolve in verse upon the axis of the pen be thou eternally my guide teach me your mystic pen to use oh linger ever near i cried musician artist poet muse end of poem this recording is in the public domain a recollection by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org by nemo a recollection in my heart there is a fragrance not of bursting buds or bloom but a faint delicious essence floats as out of memory's room like a zephyr blown from heaven some sweet message to impart comes a fragile recollection down the bypath to my heart fragile did i say so fragile that the lace wrought butterfly would not tilt its wings to bear it back from earth into the sky yet perplexed as to its mission down the pathway i retreat hark an echo in the distance as of silver's slippered feet why should i evade its coming when tis such a little thing just a tiny recollection that my thoughts have given wing soon too soon twill overtake me see tis gaining on me fast in my soul the rose leaves quiver withered rose leaves of the past it is useless to dissemble for their fleeing is in vain round my heart i feel the tightening of a slender silken chain all the past spreads out around me as if by the hand above so i turn and find i'm standing face to face with my first love and a poem this recording is in the public domain
Don't Question Him Why by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Pat Mathewson, England, 2017 Don't question him why, if at times you can trace A sorrowful something that looks from his face Though it shadows his brow as a rain cloud the sky Look on it and wonder, don't question him why if he steal from your side when the twilight descends, And wander away from old comrades and friends, To rest unobserved in some shady retreat, Where the past and the present seem always to meet, Don't follow him there, let the stars overhead Their better and holier sympathy shed, And should an old love-light illumine his eye, Though you bask in its splendour, don't question him why. For out of the past that is shrouded away Looks a face omnipresent, unseen by the day A face like no other, a face in the sky To be looked at and worshipped, but not questioned why Should his lips meet your own with an indifferent grace That hurries the bloom to your averted face Though doubt is a sentinel stationed nearby Beware of his bayonet, don't question why you may ask if you choose as he moves through the dance, if tis beauty or passion that cowers his glance. But question him not, oh, ask him not why, there awoke in his bosom that deep-seated sigh. Should he turn from the ballroom sometime with disgust, and shake from his sandals its memory and dust, to bear a sick heart with its fevers of sin, beg heaven to filter a dewdrop within. But question him not, for a word like a spark Would quicken the pulses reduced by the dark. Leave, leave him alone with his sorrow and God, And let silence spread o'er his heart's grave the sod. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Why? By Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org Why is it that I keep her glove? Poor little phantom of lost love. Why was it that I wore her ring? And loved the songs she used to sing? And treasure under lock and key? the letters she has written me. Why? Why is it that where'er I go, as footsteps follow in the snow, as low and light she seems to glide along the highway at my side, yet when my arms seek to embrace her form, then vanishes her face. Why? Why is it that no other tone falls on my ear as did her own? No other hand so soft and white, no other eye so warm and bright, Though other lips I since have pressed, I something missed, the truth you've guessed. Why? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.